Mm. Let's talk about the anti-Israel protests that have erupted in America, in American college campuses. There are reportedly outside agitators taking part in these protests and there are reports that some protesters are receiving funding from several Democrat donors, according to a Politico analysis. What's your understanding of, of who may be financially backing these protesters and what impact is it having? Well, I'm not surprised to hear that there's a strong presence of outside agitators, that there is funding coming from various sources, because ultimately what these protests are about and what these individuals who support them want, it's not merely about a hatred of Israel. It's about a hatred for Western values. It's about a hatred for liberalism, a hatred for the US and Australia and everything that these countries stand for. And so no doubt those in a position of power and with means will see this as an opportunity to infiltrate these movements to make them more aggressive, more violent, more extreme in order to pursue their ideology and their agenda. So we need to wake up to what's happening. This isn't a matter of students being concerned with human rights abuses or international law or the peace process or even a concern for the Palestinians. This is about being anti-Western, wanting to paralyze our system, our higher education facilities, our government, our way of life, and we need to stop this. Would you say that these protests are fueling anti-Semitism? They certainly are. When you have people chanting in support of an intifada, which means the, the suicide bombing of Israeli civilians, when you have people chanting, and now a federal senator from the Labour Party uh, repeating the, the slogan of from the river to the sea, which is an old Arab nationalist slogan calling for the destruction and ethnic cleansing of the state of Israel. When you have these sorts of things happening, it inflames tension. And you see it transmit to social media where the tone and the tenor of discourse and commentary has become so nakedly and openly and unashamedly anti-Semitic. I'm seeing things online which I've never seen before with the sort of regularity and the viciousness of the attacks on the Jewish community, the repetition of old anti-Semitic tropes and slogans. And this is all linked to a lack of leadership and what's happening in the public domain. It then flows into every aspect of our society. And if we don't stop it at the top, things will get worse and worse. And we're already seeing alleged terror plots against our community in Australia and around the world. And I fear what will happen if we don't step back from this chasm. Mm. The United Nations has quietly revised down its estimated death toll for Gaza. Initially, it was estimated that the uh, casualty number for women was 9,500 and 14,500 for children. However, those figures have been significantly reduced to under 5,000 for women and 8,000 for children, respectively. So those figures are around half of the numbers in the UN's previous report. C can I get your reaction to this development? What does it tell us? Well, look, from the beginning of the war, many media outlets have been uncritically quoting Hamas statistics for casualties, statistics which are obviously inflated for their own political purposes, statistics which draw no distinction between militants, terrorists and civilians. And a lot of the world, UN agencies and various non-government organisations in the media have been blindly repeating this because it suits their own agenda. I don't expect people to take notice of this because ultimately those who have an agenda of fostering greater hatred of Israel and the Jewish community will ignore this. They will keep focusing on slurs and accusations which hold no basis in fact, like the outrageous claim of a genocide. You have a situation where Israel is fighting a horrific war inflicted on it by Hamas on October 7. It is a just and necessary war to defeat terror, to rescue its hostages and prevent further attacks on Israeli territory. When you compare it, for example, with other wars in recent years, in the Syrian civil war, you had 600,000 people dead, 600,000. I never heard the word genocide mentioned once or the sorts of actions we're seeing in international forums and online as well. In the Yemen civil war, 150,000 people died. Likewise, the same accusations leveled at Israel were never made. But after seven months of a horrific war that was not of Israel's choosing, we now learn, as we really knew all along, that the civilian death toll is less and at a lower proportion than any other modern war of its type. But again, given the propaganda use of these numbers, I don't expect people to actually take note mm -hmm. and to now question or apologise for the slurs and accusations which they unfairly uh, levelled for so long.